Good evening and welcome once again to the Whiskey Cowboy Live. Today's date is April 7th, 2024. It is Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We are, as always, waiting for folks to join the room. Tonight's coffee, Caramel Macchiato from New England brand. I like caramel in my whiskey, different things like that. In my coffee, it tends to not be, not me be my favorite. You get all sorts of baggy, baggy arm. Uh, mainly because they don't have enough of it to make it worth my while. Because caramel and coffee can actually mellow it down. Hey, Wayne. Welcome to the show. Wayne says, welcome to the apocalypse. Yes. Yes. Every show is the apocalypse. Apocalypse means the, the uh, making of known, to make known. It's the unfolding. Apocalyptic is the stories of the unfolding of time in history. So yes, yes. Read that. Oh, uh, pa, apaka, apaka, up, up. Yeah, did you add some letters in there? Apaka, apoc eclipse. There you go. The apoc eclipse. <laughs> you did. It's like okay, you did. Uh, you did add some letters in there. Apoc eclipse. Got me. Laurel says, good evening, just back inside from helping. Corral the neighbor's horses. You know, I got, got a heart over the end. Well, welcome to the show. Glad you could make it. The eclipse. <laughs> I don't care about the eclipse. Well, was the last time we had one of these was two th this type back in 2017. I think that's when the missus said it was 2017 that's fine that's fine <laughs> we'll have plenty more before we leave this mortal coil folks are folks are in early good <laughs> it's good a little phlegmy tonight because the the weather warmed up again we were at 50 degrees today after after that snowstorm and crap that got got us hit in the northeast should be what 70 we got a day in the 70 70 hit 70 this week so we'll see how that goes two bird houses out on the front porch the birds are making full use to them i've been watching them today gather stuff up and bring them in so hopefully i can get them out of my damn light but they're all happy. They're all happy. The girls are happy. Plenty of eggs. I know, I guess. I get some more pictures. I'll get some pictures of the gals and put them up for everybody. Just been doing other things. Laurel said we had 70s today. Now the rain starts. Yeah, I don't mind about the rain. Wayne says his first total eclipse was August 11th, 1999, in Stuttgart, Germany, the day my divorce was finalized. Talk about <laughs> omens. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's something. That's something. I don't know. It could be an omen. Good omen, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> if it happened on your wedding day, that'd be a that'd be a hell of an omen. Get married and have a have a total eclipse on your wedding day. It's like, oh, <laughs> uh, either maybe I should have picked somebody different or picked a different day. What else we got going on here? I acted some folks today at the grocery store about they're going up north. A lot of folks are going up north to see the eclipse. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> 
Yeah, been there, done that, seen it. It's, it's, it's fine by me. We're looking at these, the numbers coming in. I'm sure Gus is out there looking now. Gus, Gus and Sally. Is that a Walker 44 off to your right shoulder? No, that is a, a Ruger Old Army. 45. Is a ball and cap, though. Black powder. Modern version. Modern version. Like I had said on the show before, if, if they could have had that beauty back, back before they had... Uh, Wayne says, nice shooting iron there. It is. <laughs> it is. If they had had that back before they came out with metal cartridges, that's, that's what everybody would want. Boy, smooth, slick, accurate, good firing. Yeah, it's taking all the best of pre-cartridge days, pre-metal cartridge days, and just ramping it up. I, when was that? Uh, Gruger came out with that and... 78? When did they come out with that? Let's find out when they came out with the Ruger Old Army. Uh, 72. Came out in 72. Produ production dates was 1972 to 2008. Wayne says uh, he has his great grandfather's 1865 Springfield. First, I gotta bring that up. First Allen conversion in 58 cal. Yeah, 58. That's a big round. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big round. Yeah, 44, 45. That's good enough. That's 58's big. That is big. Yeah, if anyone can get themselves and get their hands on a Ruger Old Army black powder ball and cap, go ahead and go ahead and shoot it. You'll be you'll be surprised. Wayne says one of the first breech loading Springfields. Ah, oh, so that's a rifle, not a. Uh, Not a revolver. Hey, Donna, welcome to the show. Yeah, the breech loaders. Boy, that revolutionized things. But the, the problem is the U.S. military was always behind the times. They didn't want to, they didn't want to go to the, to the lever action. Then they did. I mean, their enemy, the people they were fighting at them before they did. Like, come on now. And I understand why. They got to outfit the whole, the whole army. They stayed with the muskets way too long. Wayne said it's a short. It's a 1865 short, about eight inches shorter than the rifles, size rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Call Pre-carbine. <laughs> Pre-carbine. I forget the designation of what makes it a carbine versus a knot, but I think some of it has to do with overall size. Yeah, good technology. But yeah, Ruger Old Army. Sweet, sweet-looking gun. Beautiful. Modern sights, adjustable. Works like a works like a swish watch. I mean, you just the action in it is so silky smooth, and it's and it's set so that it doesn't have doesn't have a firing block that comes up like the new ones do. But what it does is it has it so that you can take the cylinder and you can turn it half half a click. So half between between the actual cylinders and rest the hammer down. So you can you can go fully loaded. Ah, my nose. Wayne said, "That's my, that's my must own a Sharps Cavalry Carbine." Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, nowadays, I guess what what would they call them now? They'd call them like a, uh, you call them a scout or, or a, a. Uh, God, what do they call the the guide? They call, call them a guide gun. The short ones now, call them a scout or a guide gun. Depend upon you where you live. That's that's more than more than ac- adequate. You don't need the extra inches to help burn it off. Carbine, 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 carbon, carbonara. Yeah. Yeah, I know they call them a carbine, but don't they call them scouts now? Scouts and hunters now, the short ones. The army has almost gone completely to the M4 carbine these days. Yeah, they got what's there? They got a new one. They got a. They got a. They're working on a new one. Did I see that? Did I see that? Oh, and they're also going to try to slip it in. They're going to go. Uh, what was it going going back up to three oh eight? Wayne says, uh, "Big mistake in my estimation." Yeah, they've made their they've made their share. They've made their share. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're not making the decisions. Lots that go into their choices, and it's, it's uh, not always for the best for the the troop on the ground. He says, I think it would be a good idea, though, going back to the 7.62 NATO cartridge. It's got more punch. Here's, here's my problem. Here's my problem with a lot of the military decisions out there is they're, they're trying to predict warfare. I mean, stop and think about it. After World War II, they wanted to stop making tanks. Oh, because tank warfare is done. Yeah, right. They keep trying to kill the, uh, the warthog. Yeah, right. Stop fucking with shit. If it works, keep it. There's a reason. It's like, yeah, they found out that most soldiers are 350 yards and closer. I got it. That's great. But in my estimation, that doesn't... That doesn't mean that you have to get rid of the 7.62. 308 for all of you civilian folks out there. Hey, Donna. Change your change your change your volume settings. I'm getting a feedback loop. I'm sorry, I always do that. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just letting you know. Wayne says the eight uh, six point eight grundle sounds good. So I wouldn't have to punch the button. No, it's okay. Well, yeah, uh, Wayne. Even the uh, three hundred blackouts great. If that's what you need, <laughs> if you're just doing, if you're doing just just uh, urban stuff, three oh three oh eight blackouts, awesome. It's the seven point six two or three oh eight, basically less powder. Hey, are you? You're, are you getting feedback? Yes, I'm getting feedback. <laughs> yeah, check your system. Are you getting feedback? Yes, I'm getting feedback. Okay. Well, how the hell do I fix that? Okay, try it now. Hello. One, two, Hello? three. One, two, Are three. You there? Yeah, I'm here. You don't have to talk. Just let me talk. One, two, three. One, two, three. See now, no, no feedback. So whatever you did, it was fine. Uh, I'm not hearing you. Oh, now you're not hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Well, I'm, uh, I'm barely hearing. This is different. I did the same thing I always done. Yeah, I don't know what the, I don't know what it is on your end. Okay. Wayne says my favorites at the moment are the M nineteen oh three and M one Grand and thirty odd six. Thirty odd six is a big round. That's a big round. That's old school. 
He said the M1 carbine and 30 caliber. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple guy. Give me a 7.62, 308. That's fine. Uh, you got to go urban, 300 blackouts, ideal. But I don't think that I would, unless I just wanted to spend the money. If it's a shit hit fan situation, you got to stick with the tried and true and the trusty out there that you can just pop in. So a 308, 5.56. Can't go wrong with either of them. And you can you can hunt with a 308. Most places in the country. Big enough to drop a deer. So how you doing tonight, Donna? Oh, tired. Mm. Been riding a hoe for the last few days. <laughs> riding, a, riding a hoe, huh? Not that kind of hoe, no. <laughs> like, whoa. Hey, now. The girl's been riding home. Well, I'm sorry I missed you guys. I missed Easter, and I missed last Wednesday. Yeah, that's okay. We were here. Ah, well. Easter was short. Cut it down. Everybody was late. I guess. I guess most of the gals they they wanted to to slide on in. It was right after, right when I was closing. I had just closed down, and they all wanted to come in. It's like, oh, too late. I gave them 20 minutes. Figure 20 <laughs> minutes. 20 hey, minutes. That's and, quite a bit of time. Yeah, 20 minutes. You but can say a lot in 20 minutes. I can, but I there was stuff I wanted to say, but I didn't want to say it without y'all being there. So it was just gu- gussing myself. <laughs> so I was like, well, no, I'm not going to waste you know the, the time well, if nobody's here. Call Gus. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I shut down the show, and I called <laughs> Gus. And then we talked, and then we, on Wednesday, we discussed most of the stuff that Gus and I had talked about on the phone. Wayne says, I own a 5.6 caliber, an M1903, the M1, and two M1 carbines, and an M1911A1 for a sidearm. Yeah. I want a 5.56, 5, 5, <laughs> Yeah, it's but a good... It's a... <laughs> It's a what? It's one of them guns you're not supposed to have. Gun you're not... I know of no such gun I'm not supposed to have. Well, I mean, according to the lids, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's an AR. Oh, you can have that. That's fine. Hey. I suggest every woman get themselves a hey, 5.56. Oh, the, and the easy shooting... Easy yeah, shoot. Oh, get a shotgun. No, shotguns got too much no, kick to them. No, 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 get an no. a, get an AR platform. Get a five point five six. They were fun. Yeah, were really fun. We had a blast out at the gun range. Yep, it's a good gun. Hey, Peggy. Peggy says, "Hey there. Hey there. Hi there. Ho oh, there. Ho. Oh, there's another ho." <laughs> Gus says, "Scary gun. No, yeah, <laughs> scary gun. I know. Yeah, but we like scary things." Oh, yeah. We like scary things. We like scary things. I have a bookcase full of Stephen King. Don't like his politics, but boy, I like his writing. Well, some of his writing's okay. Wayne said he carried the M16 in the infantry for 13 and a half years and the M4 carbine for 14 and a half in the MPs. Laurel says, hi, Peggy and Gus. She already said hi to Donna earlier. Oh, and and iron sights, no optics. Yeah, I got no problem with iron sights. The older I get, though, optics are cool. (laughs) I got no, I have no problems with optics. You want to put optics on your gun, go ahead and do it. it. It takes me a minute. I mean, it just takes time to just the sights i mean like that i mean i guess i grew up shooting shotgun you know yeah well so it's so yeah it's you want opt if you put optics on your on your firearm just make sure you got got some iron sights as well to back it up yep. that's right but yeah i got no problem with optics Whether it's a red dot or you name it. S and W 
9.30 has a green dot. Has a little different optic to it. It's a it's not like uh, my other handgun. It's uh, just got a red dot. And it's some kind of a digital thing, I think. Is it a, is it something that's sitting on the top of it, or is what is it where your your normal sights are? No, it's uh, sitting on the top. So it's a mechanical device that's sitting on the top. Yeah. 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 Wayne says my unit got the red dot sights, and before we developed to I- before we deployed to Iraq, and concentrated on those, I warned them once we got into combat, they wouldn't be able to get batteries. Yeah, it's a problem. Two weeks after we got oh, into bad. Iraq, the batteries were dead. Yeah. Always make sure your make sure your irons are working. Again, yeah. technology is great. I bet over there it's probably hard to get anything. I mean, in a reasonable time. Yeah, it just, it just depends. Whatever the supply chain is. Then they switch to ACOGs. The ACOGs, they don't need batteries, but they're bulky. Because it wasn't. The, the ACOGs are using the tritium, right? Tritium as well as the... Uh, some sort of mechanism to get the light down into it. Gus says, if it's a long gun, dot care what sight is on it. However, it's a handgun, you have a choice. Uh, Stop it, Gus. (laughs) Stop. So, how was uh, your storm? It was a mess. We only got one one good day of it, though, where I am. I had uh, between... I think it was seven. It was a solid seven. It may have been more with good three inches of slush underneath it. So it was it was heavy. A lot of people lost power. Oh wow! Yeah. Gus had a little bit more. Gus says I think Gus He's said he had like you, ten right? inches or something like that. And Sally Sally told the misses that they had like a foot. So <laughs> I don't oh. know who was doing the measuring. I didn't think he was that far north of you. He isn't. Oh, wait a minute. He's up on the mountain, isn't he? No, he's just he's just north, but not that far. We've we've talked about this. The the state has some weird weather bands. And I'm I'm about twenty minutes south of Concord. He's about twenty minutes north of Concord. So that's a forty forty minute traveling distance. But the weather that I get versus the weather that he gets, he tends to get more snow than I do just because of the way the weather band is. Is it always like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because ours kind of moves around like that last storm scare that we got, uh, the tornado thing. It was like north and south of us. We didn't we didn't hardly get a drop. We just yeah. wind blew a little. Yeah, you can generally in the state, you can predict pretty much what you're going to get and where. Because there's, like I said, there's bands. And it's just yeah. because of the way the topography is and the way the, the, the weather right. moves through that you can, you can generally tell. Yeah, our, our bands tend to move, though. Yeah. Wayne says uh, the only add on. I can say I approved was the ANPAQ4 aiming laser. Use it with night vision. If you had the laser zeroed to the rifle, it was pretty much point and shoot. Well, that's handy. <laughs> that's that's handy. I think, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I have a red dot on one of my guns, and then I've got uh, that laser on one of the others, so it's... Yeah, it's different. It's a little bit different. Mm. Uh, Tonight's coffee again is caramel macchiato from New England brand. Tonight's coffee is mocha. Mocha. Chaka mocha. Chaka shaka. Shaka Zulu. (laughs) <laughs> she's she's been riding hose all day and she's got her shaka zulu coffee <laughs> yeah, my fingers hurt 
Uh oh. Yeah, I'm getting ready. This week I should be starting the yard work. It's time. I was I was gonna start it, but then we got the storm come in, so I'm starting all over again. You think it's the last one? Yeah, this will be it. This will be it. And I won't have nothing more. <laughs> not, none. Not even enough for discussion. It's not happening. No, nah, I don't see it happening. This should be the very last storm. What else we got going on here? Pull up some stuff. I've been playing my, my guitar a lot, a lot more lately. Still waiting on the dulcimer. I'll, I'll contact him this week because it's the 7th. He said it was supposed to be done last month, and he ain't contacted me, so I'll contact him. Gus says he's taking the blower off this week. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is it. We won't have it again. Uh, let's see here. New York City. Yeah, they've agreed $180,000 between three Muslim women back in 2018 who were arrested and they had to remove their hijabs. They didn't like that none. So they, they were paid $180,000 between, between the three of them. Well, New York City in conjunction with a, a class action lawsuit, also from 2018, has agreed to pay $17.5 million to be paid out by anyone who who was arrested for crimes in New York City and had to remove their hijab for their mugshot because we violated their religious beliefs. So, hey, taxpayers paying for this shit and they agree with this, they keep electing these jack wagons, have at it. Gus says most of the snow is gone now. You knew it wouldn't last long. Yeah, most of us are. Most of ours has gone up here. The backs, the backs, more cleared than the front. But uh, last week, Mass General Birmingham of Massachusetts, their their Massachusetts largest hospital network, announced that they are no longer going to refer to. Child Protective Services or police or anybody like that. Babies who test positive for drugs. As a default, they're going to have to... They used to, every time it did, they sent the reports in. But now they're not going to. Now they're going to be selective. And why? Because they said that it was... That it was... Uh, that they saw racial and ethnic inequities, saying that more punitive approaches to substance abuse during pregnancy disproportionately affect black individuals. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like, here we go. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Might be reasons for that, like I'd posted out in my little write-up. It's the same way with crime statistics. It's like, oh, there's a reason for that. Oh, gee, well, well, black people get sentenced higher for the same crimes as white people do. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at that. What that's did they actually, getting... well, what did they get arrested for? Chances are yeah, they didn't exactly. get arrested for the same thing. And how many times? Yeah, there's how many times. That matters. But a lot of those cases are plead downs. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. in other words, that's... you look at the records and it says, oh, this person is in there for, for marijuana possession. Oh, yeah. They, they shouldn't be in there down. for marijuana possession. No, they were arrested for distribution. They pled down to possession. Or <laughs> it's, gun. So, yeah, there's all sorts That's of things that go into, go into what was actually done. You can't just look at what, the, what, what they were convicted of and the time that they were sentenced for and the race. That doesn't tell you anything. You got to look, you, you have to look further than that. Not what they were convicted of. I got to write about that too. I hate pleading down. Look, I understand why they do it. I understand why the system has pleading down. Because it at least gets people in for something and it saves taxpayers time and money. I get it. But the problem is, 
I'm of the philosophy, if you didn't do it, you shouldn't spend time. And you should spend time for the shit you do. So if, if the crime that they actually committed was three levels higher, and the crime that they pled down to was something they didn't actually do, that's not justice. Put them through the, put them through the cycle. Put them through the cycle. Charge them, try them, convict them, and sentence them for what they did. Not this bullshit pleading down. Because that doesn't, they did that shit with the January 6th people. That happens all the time. You go, you look at somebody's record and it goes, look, they, <laughs> they admitted to this, this, and this. It's like, yeah, yeah, they did. They didn't commit the crime, but they were afraid of rolling the dice on the system and getting hammered higher. Yeah, especially there. So I think the whole thing's just, it, it's an injustice. It does not, does not help anybody out. Arrest them and charge them for what they did or what you think they did. And that's it. Pleading down? No. No. I can guarantee you, I don't care. You can arrest me and charge me with you, whatever you want. If I didn't do it, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to plead guilty for it. And I'm certainly not going to plead guilty for something that's lesser <laughs> that I also didn't do. Let's play this out. And then you're going to get a very angry, vindictive man. You want the criminal, you're going to get the criminal. Yeah. Leave innocent people alone. Because I don't play them games. Hammer criminals hard. But no. The people that get screwed are law-abiding citizens. They get screwed. Criminals? Shit. The criminals set up for them. So again, leave the innocent people alone. You mess with me. You want a criminal, I'll give you a criminal. Let's play it out. God, I'll be glad when things change. Well, there's a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. Grandma, the praying grandma. Yeah. January 6th, praying grandma. Oh, she, yeah. she was convicted last week. Four counts, four misdemeanor counts. And uh, she faces up to a year in prison and fines more than $200,000 for staying in the Capitol building all of 10 minutes. She was seen yeah, she, praying. She sat down and prayed. Yeah, well, that, she did that before she went in, from what I understand. Okay. is they, they, they got her on tape. She prayed outside, and people knew what she prayed for. She prayed for our country. She wandered in with everybody else. She did a loop, talked with a police officer. Everything was fine and left. Through the same door she went in at 10 minutes. <laughs> Four misdemeanors. I, I don't think that they're, I don't think she's going to serve time. But the fact that they tried her, they went, they went to Colorado to go pick her ass up. Really? Yeah, yeah. The FBI go, yeah. they show up. She's, she runs a bed and breakfast and she was baking a cake. And this is oh. how much of a threat this woman is. This is how much the FBI knows is bullshit. They go to arrest her. So that they can book her, you know, they char book her on the charges. They go and arrest her. She's baking cake at, at the bed and breakfast. She says, I'm in the middle of baking a cake. Can you come back later? They came, <laughs> they came back later. Well, what the hell? Well, because they knew, they knew it was all bullshit. So they came back later after she finished her cake. Then they arrested her and they booked her. <laughs> it's like, this is... This is this is really this is taxpayers' money and and the judicial system gone crazy. This is this is insane. Yeah, whole damn things insane. It's crazy. They have they got their woman? <laughs> A terrible threat to threat to democracy, threat to our nation. Praying grandma, they got her. 71-year-old woman. Crazy. Well, I finished that cup. I'm on my I'm on my orca cup now. Yeah, crazy. What else we got going on here? Post up a video of Brothers Osborne. 
shoot me straight. That used to be that used to be my theme song <laughs> until I got copyright struck. It's like, oh well, yeah. So I guess I'm not not going to be able to use that. My fault. <laughs> I should have known better. So now I've yes, all of the music that you hear on my show, I have legal rights to use. So. Oh, let's see here. Oh, Hawaii trying to ban the possession of ammunition for anybody under the age of 21, with the exception of you can have it going to and from hunting or target practice. And while you're hunting or doing target practice, that's it. It's like, so what about it in your house? What about for self-defense? Nope, illegal. <laughs> Hawaii. What a shithole that, that island is. But, you know, the people that live there, they allow it and they keep voting for it. And nobody's held them accountable. So there you go again. That's the same state that here just, what was it, last month or two, they, were, they tried to pull that... Uh, that the Second Amendment really doesn't mean anything. It doesn't trump the aloha spirit. <laughs> it's like, really? Well, the aloha spirit trumps the, the Constitution of the United States. The aloha spirit. Yeah, well, there you go. Again, they, they do what they're allowed to do. Mr. Blinken. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, going going over there and this summit and yeah, Ukraine will become a member of NATO. Our purpose at at this summit is to help build the bridge to that membership. It's like you stupid jackass. Yeah, really, that's what the whole freaking thing's about. That's well, that's that's part of it. <laughs> that's part of what the mess exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Peggy says another state that I will never spend any tourist dollars at. Yeah, I got no desire. I got no desire to fly anywhere anyways. But uh, my son, that was his last duty station was Hawaii. And I didn't get a chance to go out and see him. I didn't have the money, didn't have the time. He's back home now I'm, anyways. I'm not a beachy person. I mean, I just never was. Not a beachy person? No. I don't know, Donna. I heard some things about you. I heard you're pretty beachy. <laughs> oh, give me woods. Give me woods. Uh, yeah, I don't mind beaches. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay I don't like sand in my on my feet and between my toes right. and stuff. And I don't like any of that. Yeah. No, I don't I'm not good and I I'd said on one of my other shows, I'm d I don't like wet clothes. So I don't either. I'm I've never been crazy about being in the water anyway <clears throat> i mean i can swim and all that good stuff but i just yeah i might be able to swim now i could <laughs> i could i don't know if i can now like i'm not a swimmer i don't like water on my face so it's like, uh, I like being on the water love canoeing yeah i like being on the water yeah. like in a boat yeah fishing boat or something like that yeah. you know? i could live on a boat yeah. i'll even wade i'll wade it i mean it's sort of i guess that's fine. Most of the time we went down to the swimming holes with the kids. We just... Right. I'll be... I'll stand in the water. I'm not thrashing around. <laughs> I'll stand in there. Whatever. But you know, let them let them do their swimming. I'm pretty tall. I can get out there deep anyways. So... Oh, nose itches. Okay, what else we got going on here? Oh, I did a write-up on the United States being invaded. And I went over the three types yeah. of invaders. If you haven't, if you haven't been, to, been to my Facebook page and read that write-up, that was uh, three days ago I wrote that. Look for the United States as being invaded. I've written about it before, but I, ne I didn't break it down quite like this. The problem is way, way deeper than what people think. I don't spend much time on Facebook anymore. Yeah. Well, I have to. That's where most people see my stuff. So. Well, that yeah, you do. But, I mean, 
Orion says Black Creek. What Black Creek? Is that where you go? You go to the Black Creek. And swimming. Let's see what else we got here. We already, already covered the storm. All bridges I post about. The bridges get hit all the time. <laughs> People don't, yeah, bridges get hit all the time. It's the same thing with the, the derailment. People, oh my God. It's like, look, there's tons of derailments all the time. Usually they're not that consequential, but they happen. So don't look into things that aren't there. Because what it does is it, it takes your attention away from the real problems that we're facing. Yeah, I think that's the whole thing. Let's see what we got here. Chickens. Chickens, the uh, last week, the largest chicken egg producer in the country got hit with bird flu. Oh, there's been a lot of that. Yeah, I think there's a six, uh, two, two to seven percent or something like that they had to call. But uh, yeah, that's why I have. That's why I have chickens of my own now. Like I tell people, it ain't cheap. It, I, the eggs are not cheaper if you raise them yourself. You've got your initial cost. You've got your upkeep. You've got all sorts of stuff. You're not getting cheaper eggs. You're getting better eggs, and you're out of the egg supply line. Orion says swimming hole. Yeah, swimming hole. So that's why we had the gals. Get us out of the supply line. If we want eggs, we can have eggs. It's not about the cost. It's we can have them. So when they're short, it isn't people say, I got no eggs. Well, I got eggs. And I give, give folks eggs. You give uh, usually one to two dozen eggs a week I give away. Sometimes more. But usually it's one or wow, two dozen. that's quite a bit. It is How quite a bit. How many chickens you got? I got now? seven, seven chickens, but they, and but that, they, and you get that many eggs. Yeah, now. we get we get uh, four to seven eggs a day. So you're looking at over two dozen a week, and they add up. So yeah. So if I skip a week, like I said, if I if I skip a week giving giving eggs out, then we got three dozen that goes out. We've got uh, three eighteens cartons down on the table, and we've just started putting in eggs in the third. God, I eat a lot of eggs. I like eggs. Yeah, eggs are great, and these are good eggs. I dropped off dropped off a dozen at uh, Gus and Sally's Friday. I think it was Friday. Sally handed over a bag of seasoned flour. She picked it up. I think she picked it up. Gosh, she picked it up down in uh, down in Connecticut. You went down there for family. Sally and them didn't make the flour. They just picked it up. It's, so they gave us some. I don't know how much it was. Pound maybe. I don't know. It looked like a pound. Could have been more than a pound. I don't know. It was a cont- it was a bag of flour. So we'll be using that for uh, country fried steak and country fried chicken and stuff. I had that last night. The steak? No, the chicken. The chicken? Yeah. Chicken fried chicken. Chicken fried chicken. Country fried chicken. Yeah. We went to a place. Gus says no. Comes from Virginia. No, I didn't say where it came from. I said you picked it up down. Didn't you pick it up down in uh, in Connecticut? Isn't that where you, where you picked it up at? I mean, you didn't drive down to Virginia. I thought you picked it up down there in Connecticut when you were visiting. But yeah, the uh, my youngest, her her guy, and he proposed proposed to her last week. So, got a wedding wedding coming. Couple, couple Octobers from now, but I guess he, he comes from uh, Kentucky. 
It's like, okay, he's come from Kentucky and he's never had country fried chicken or steak. So, really? yeah, that's where I said, okay. It's like, okay, we'll make him, we'll make him some. We were planning on having it tomorrow night because Monday's their, their dinner night to come on over and eat. But yeah, Gus said her sister brings it up for, from Virginia. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And y'all met in well, Connecticut, right? They may call it something different, though. Up in your neck of the woods. What? Country fried chicken or steak or whatever. No, well, I guess, I guess he knows what it is because she told him what it is, and he's he's never had it. So yeah, the white. They don't call it any different anywhere, do they? Everywhere I've lived, it's always been country fried. It's a, you take a steak or. Cube steak, you can use cube, cube yeah, steak. They, they call it chicken fried. Yeah, you? chicken fried. Yeah, well, ch they call it chicken fried steak, but it's country fried chicken <laughs> because it's not chicken fried chicken because it doesn't work. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's still, the only difference here is like chicken fried chicken is breaded and deep fried and then covered in gravy. and all. Yeah, that's country fried. And then... And then chicken fried steak is country fried, but they, they call it chicken because you used to Yeah, but it's like it, right. pan fried or something. It's not deep fried or breaded. Or yeah, we can do it both ways. But, yeah, we we usually do ours in uh, we do it in a cast iron pan, and we call it pan fried. It's, it's, it's deep frying it, but it's only half. The oil's only half the thickness of what you're frying. Right. Laurel says country fried is country fried wherever you live. Right. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. It's, it's always been the same. We either called the steak either chicken fried steak or country fried steak, but chicken is always country fried chicken. And then you serve it normally, normally with a white gravy, uh, right. usually peppered, like a white, a pepper gravy, but it's white. Cream gravy. Yeah, it's cream gravy. You could do it with a dark gravy, and it still works, but normally yeah. it's, a, it's a white I, gravy. I like the white gravy better. Yeah. But, yeah, I thought that was right, Laurel, because I've lived all over the country, and it's always been country fried no matter where I went. Country fried. Did you get it? Chicken fried chicken. Chicken fried chicken. What the hell is chicken? No, country fried chicken. Or chicken fried steak, which is country fried. Gus says, Cracker Barrel specials. Yummy. Cracker Barrels. That's racist. <laughs> yeah, chicken and dumplings a big thing up there? Chicken and dumplings? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's had. It's, it's, not a, it's not a big... It, it, Cracker Barrel might even have some of that if they have yeah, it up here. But, uh, good. but, yeah. Chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings. Oh, I love chicken and dumplings. I love the dumplings. Uh, uh, <laughs> my wife calls them snot balls. <laughs> she doesn't like them. I love them. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're snot, snotty. They're slimy. That's fine. That's, that's okay. It's part of the charm. When I was up north, the uh, dumplings that they make are like, I don't know, balls. Yeah, you it know, depends. You can you can get them the biscuit size. You can get it balls. I think the balls are fine. I like rolled up dumplings better. Mm. Peggy says I'm with you, Gus. Love Cracker Barrel. Racist. Yeah, I like Cracker Barrel. We got one. And then the pound has anybody else uh, ever had poutine or even know? Yeah, we've talked about that on the show. Poutine. Yeah. Here's a here's something what that poutine. Let's see here. What is it? I'll show you here. It's a uh, dish with French fries, cheese curds, topped with brown gravy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it gravy is good. on my fries. Oh, and fries gravy. and gravy we is good. We call them wets. We always call them, them wets. Yeah. Wets. Yeah. 
Bikini bourbon. Hmm. Bike and bourbon. Oh, God. No, I'm sorry. I don't. Yeah, guy. see, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't, I like I like my bourbon. I just you know you can keep your flavors. Biking bourbon, howdy folks says biking bourbon. Biking biking bourbon. That is biking, right? B i k i n g. Yeah. It's a little small on yeah, my screen. I screwed up. I read it wrong. Oh, not bacon bourbon. Biking bourbon. Bourbon. I said bikini bourbon. Bikini Burbs. bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, I put on my bikini and my bourbon. Gus says it's very French. Yes, French Canadian. French Canadian. Vous toi, suck le bleu. <laughs> yeah, I know a little bit of French, not much. <laughs> German. Yeah, I speak German. So, how are you to this evening, biking bourbon? Is this the first time on the show? Or are you somebody that's stopped in here now, now using a different name? But yeah, I don't, I don't do the, I, I'm not a, not a big whiskey liqueur kind of guy. Add flavors to it. Oh, <laughs> give me like American honey. Oh, gross. <laughs> Get out of here. I like a good honey note in, in my bourbon, but I don't like honey whiskey <laughs> no no ah, biking bourbon says first time or ran across your channel well welcome welcome the show's usually on every sunday and wednesday night same time we talk about just about anything <laughs> you never know what we're going to talk about We've got folks from all over the world popping in not a big crowd usually Okay, never a big crowd. <laughs> never, never a big crowd. Used to have a lot more when I was running it live on Facebook, but then they didn't migrate over here. I don't know why. It's like, y'all have YouTube. It's just as easy. Laurel says, welcome, biking bourbon. Pat says, greetings all. Yeah. Peggy says, hey there, biking bourbon. Biking bourbon. Well, that's got to have a, that's got to have a backstory to it. So why'd you, why'd you choose that moniker? You like bourbon and you like to bike? Is I, the picture's really small. I don't know whether you're mountain biking or motor, motor biking or whatever it is. What's the story behind that? And what part of the world you're from? We got, like I said, we got people from all over the place. Got a, got a guy from Turkey comes in, and a handful from Germany. Folks from all over the country here. I'm in New Hampshire. I don't look like I'm from New Hampshire because I'm not from New Hampshire. That's where I live. I live in New Hampshire. That's where the missus is from. So come on, out with it. B and B. What's the uh, what's the story? What part of the what part of the world are you hailing from, and why the name? Ah, mountain, fat tire, gravel bike, and love winter riding. Wisconsin. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, used to have some folks from Wisconsin, too. What part of Wisconsin? Don't say, don't say Beloit. <laughs> No Beloit. No. Yeah, fat tire mountain biking. We got a bunch of those around here. P 
better in the sand, sand and gravel. Fat bikes, fat bikes, fat tires, fat bikes, fat tires. Yeah, Gus, you're a big, uh, you're a big mountain mountain biking guy, aren't you, Gus? Can't get enough of it. Peggy says Wisconsin has the best cheese curds. They got some good cheese curds. They got some good cheese curds here in New England too. Okay, near Milwaukee, but a place in northern Wisconsin near the Michigan border. Oh, okay, okay. That you couldn't get much further from Beloit than. <laughs> oh. He's he's further north of uh, Lake Geneva too, I reckon. Wisconsin, the Dells, <laughs> the Dells, Adele, Adele, no, the Dells, the Dells, the Dells, not Adele. Yeah, you get you get kind of sketchy down down there by by God says no. You get sketchy the closer you get down to Illinois. You get those border towns. It's like no, I don't think so. Don't think so. No, thank you. No, Gus does not mountain bike. See what's going on here. Put up a picture of me and my guitar. <laughs> my guitar. Let's see what we got going on here. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, it's me and my guitar. That was actually last night. I was playing last night. I'm plugged. There, <laughs> you can't see it. Down, down below the headstock. There, I've got my my Fender amp, and then you can't see the plug coming out the back of my my guitar, but it's there. I wasn't pleased with the picture, so I didn't post it up last night. I was just not not having it, but I was having a good time playing. Uh, yeah, getting time, getting time to play out on the porch again, getting warm. The gals like that. The gals, by the way, for uh, for biking bourbon. That's the chickens. Chickens are the gals. Chickens love guitar. They love guitar. Tractor riding. Yeah, there you go. You got enough of them. Guess has got enough tractors. Sally thinks his tractor sexy. Isn't that the way the song goes? Yeah, I remember that song. Judy says, hey, Judy, welcome to the show. You're late. Better late than never, I guess. She goes, well, you're here. <laughs> it's Easter, Easter Sunday, 20 minutes, and then I left, and all the girls come flying in. It's like, yeah, too late, too late. Got enough people to nail down the show tonight. Nail it down. So okay, we got the we got the biking. We got the biking part. Now where's the bourbon part come in? Except of course, huh? Bourbon. Yeah, I like bourbon. Like me a good high rye bourbon. That's what I had the other night. Friday I had a high rye bourbon. I got a I got an Instagram page too. They call them pages. I don't think a, an account. I got an Instagram account, not a page. A page would be like Facebook, right? I got a Facebook page, Instagram account. Same thing. The whiskey cowboy. He says, I assume it's pretty obvious. Do love rye. Yeah, I'm a non-botanical rye guy. I don't like botanicals. I love rye. Oh, I love a good rye. I don't care for the botanicals. So they go, non-botanical, what the hell? Pine cones. It tastes, it's like gin. Gin's botanical. Not a gin drinker. It's kind of like, like my scotch. I like my scotch, but I don't like peated scotch. 
So I like a non-peated scotch. You go, oh, <laughs> there's such a thing? Yes. Yes, there is. Glenn Morangi, look it up. It's good. And then I like what I call crossover drinks. They're, they have the they have the nice flavors outside, like a if it, if it's an Irish and you like bourbon, then get a uh, Bushmills Red Bush. You have some bourbon notes in there. You like rise? Get yourself like a a Powers Johns Lane. Oh yeah. It's all the best that you, that you can get out of an Irish, but you have good spices in there. It's yummy. Judy says it's been really windy here, but no fires so far. Right here. Got to bring that up. Here near me. Fires? We're in fire season already? Kind of early, isn't it? Down there, she, Judy's in, in Oklahoma. Yeah, I think <clears throat> Oklahoma and Texas have have had for months. Fires? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, still early. Still early in the season. I moved up from Oklahoma for the general <laughs> viewerships. I had, a, I had a place down on the red. Hop back and forth in Texas. My brother-in-law is in Oklahoma fishing. Fishing? Fishing where? Where are they fishing? Uh, Grand Lake, I think. Grand Lake. Where's that, east? Mm, kind of north, northwest of me. Yep, up in uh, Cherokee County, up there. Let's see here. Hey, there's a Grand Lake right there. We're sorry, but there's an error that's occurred. Stop it. I don't care about that. Oh, the error is it's not showing me any uh any topography. Come on, reload there. Kind of a skinny long windy lake, looks like. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, just, just above Cherokee Nation. That's, yeah. uh Okay, there's Broken Arrow. Muskogee Creek. Yeah, that's up there. Yeah, that's up north. Yeah, because there's Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, yeah that's nice north uh, northeast Oklahoma. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Northeast of Oklahoma City. Yeah, just uh, north of them there. That's where that barge hit that mm. cross uh, Highway 59 up north of them there. Yeah. Well, oh, looking at the shape of that lake, I'll bet you they got some good bass fishing in there. Yeah, because you got you got a couple small lakes and a river connecting them all up through there. Yeah, it's up up by Missouri. Well, I'm sure they're having a good time. Judy says, nice lake. So you been there? You got good bass bass fishing there? Yeah, that's what they fish for. Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like a good bass lake. Best bass fishing I ever had was down in Louisiana, though. I don't care for bass. I'm a walleye fisherman. Uh, I love, <laughs> love bass fishing. It's, it's it's about fishing. That's all it is. Just, yeah, I, it's about I don't fish. eat. I don't eat fish. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the missus does, but I, I like I like the fight. I like the fish. Yeah. Peggy says here in the Midwest the winds have been terrible. Yeah, terrible winds up here too. Yeah, it's been crazy here too. Judy says I walked into work and my boss said I looked rough. She said it looked like somebody <laughs> shook me, and I said the wind did. Yeah. Is your boss Donna? <laughs> Donna, Donna, if you like, you look rough. I don't shake people. Yeah, no, <laughs> I shake no, them not not I not you shaking her. I'm asking if you were the boss. You're not very diplomatic about things. No, I'm not. Hell. Judy I says that she's been there. Bass speak, fishing so is the best. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm getting even worse. Yeah. 
Yeah, Donna is it Donna doesn't have a filter. Those uh, those folks listening in, Donna doesn't have a filter. She just it just <laughs> comes right out. <laughs> uh, if you're prepared for it, it's fine. It's a, it's, a, it's it's not funny when you first meet her, but after a while you get used to it and it's like, I okay. Foot in mouth disease. Yeah. They got a cure for that. You know, hacksaw. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh my I goodness. I going to oh god, 20 years ago when my sister got married and uh one of our relatives hadn't seen her in freaking long time. And she put on quite a bit of weight. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd imagine now. <laughs> yeah. And I talk, oh boy, you put on some weight. Yeah, I can see you saying that. Yeah. Those who who haven't been around the show, I was switching cameras and and lenses and stuff like that. So between one show and another, and then Donna's like, "Did you lose weight?" <laughs> it's been three days. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the camera. Weight, it's the camera. I had alien. Oh, I hated that. I hated that perspective. I, and it made me, I turned my head and my head gets all weird shaped. It was just, it's warp proximity on the lens. So it's like, I looked like I had an alien head. It's like, no, no, <laughs> it's, it's, I didn't lose any weight. No, it's just the, the lens. Judy says we love our Donna. God, oh, Donna. <laughs> yeah. Donna. You still with us there, biking bourbon? What's going on in Wisconsin? Any news? Yeah. What's new in Wisconsin? Well, if he's near Milwaukee, got to be something going on. Yeah, there's always something going on. Something, 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 a little something, something. Folks want to join the Zoom room. The address is in the description of the show, but you must have contributed to the show. <laughs> you can't just jump in and, and log in. You'll be waiting in the waiting room, and I'll see that you want to come in. I'll let you in. And you can talk in real time. If you do that, turn off the volume of of, of yeah, don't whatever you watch, and you'll get a feed, you'll get a loop, echo loop. Most people do it. They have two devices. They'll watch the show on one, and then they'll join the Zoom room on the other one. I just didn't want to type. Well, that's what Gus does. <laughs> He's like, ah, I don't want to type. He jumps in, but he hasn't. He hasn't jumped in. Uh, you using your bionic ears tonight, or are you out for the world? Gus got himself some new bionic ears. He can listen to a show right through his head. But then Sally can't listen to it. Getting about time to start a fire. Getting fire weather. Good fire weather. Fire in the fire pit. Excuse me. Get the get the fire in the franken zebo. Like I said, it's going to be warm enough to start playing outside. Bring the guitar out. The missus enjoys it. I enjoy it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, Is uh, Madison quite a bit bigger than Milwaukee? Madison versus Milwaukee? Mm -hmm. No, I'll bet you Milwaukee's bigger. I think Madison's capital, isn't it? Yeah, but that don't make no... Yeah, I know. That don't yeah. make no difference. That don't make no never mind. Yeah, the Milwaukee's the biggest. Madison is the second biggest. Two hundred and seventy thousand people. It's not too big. It's not too big for a no, US city. That's not bad at all. No. Got a few more digits than what my community has, but <laughs> I live in New Hampshire. Yeah, I think we've only got like a hundred and seventy thousand maybe, somewhere in there. Yeah, what's that? Eighty. See what the biggest city in New Hampshire is. 
It's Manchester, of course. Yeah, it's 100, 115. 115. What did, what did I say? It was 170 for Madison? Yeah, 100, 200 and se- 270. So it's uh, twice and then again as big as our biggest city, and that's their second biggest. But again, this is New Hampshire. There ain't nothing here. What state are you in again, Donna? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, you don't have any huge, huge cities there either. Nah, Little Rock's our biggest. Yeah. <clears throat> and it ain't that big. Yeah. Yep. Got some pretty pretty areas there in Arkansas, though. Yeah. Yeah, you get up <clears throat> kind of north of us here, up in the Ozarks. Yep. It's, Ozarks it's, looks looks like my neck of the woods up here. Yeah. But yeah. softer. We're a bit yeah. hillier, and taller hills, but same yeah. type of look. <clears throat> if you're just seeing yeah, pictures. Yeah, you'd think you, it's the same. You're place. a little more rugged than us. Yeah. Ours is uh, mainly biking roads. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Gus says bigger than Concord. Yeah, it is. It's bigger than Concord. I, I think we lost. I think we lost bike and bourbon. It's like shit. Uh, I was I was expecting to hear about alcohol, and they're talking about anything but alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Is what it is. You never know. We've we've had shows where we've talked about alcohol. Yep. I got some alcohol. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a drunkard though. I am not a drunkard. I've drank more than my share when I was younger though. Lost some weekends. Didn't we all? Well, some more than others. <laughs> yeah, I was usually the designated yeah. driver. Yeah. But, you know, you mellow out with age and figure stuff out. And stuff. Figure stuff. I enjoy my alcohol too much to get drunk. And I enjoy being in control of my faculties. I don't like not don't being in control. Put all those people that are coming in for that uh, for the Air Force. We got a jet pilot program. Oh, do you? Yeah, coming in. Where are they, where are they flying out of? Oh, uh, they're. Uh, it's kind of a sales thing, I think. Oh, so they're just flying. They're not. They're just flying in for some sort of sales and seminar or something like that. They're not doing a. Uh... No, nah, they're supposed to be a permanent location oh, here. Well, where where is that? So it's where... uh, right here outside of Fort Smith at Ebbing. Oh, okay. Air Force Base. <clears throat> it's a foreign jet fighter training program. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're expecting. I don't know thirty thousand. I don't know where the hell they're going to put them. We got river on three sides of us. Yeah, <clears throat> they'll figure it out. I've done similar things with with other branches in the army. <laughs> yeah, they got training training the foreign folks come on in. Oh, that's a lot of those fun. F thirty five Lightning two training center. Hmm. Well, have fun. Yeah, it should be interesting. Yep. Yeah, I think I think he left. Unless he's snoozing out there. I think we're supposed to get some warthogs in too. You can't have too many warthogs. Oh, yeah. Love my love myself an A ten. Oh beautiful. Beautiful birds. Yeah. Ugly beautiful. <laughs> yeah. They're wonderful. Yep. So what else we got going on here? Trying to scroll through. Did I miss something here? It's a training program. It's supposed to be like uh, there's going to be pilots coming in from like Singapore and Finland and Germany and Poland and Switzerland. and So it's going to be interesting.
Boy, I screwed up that right there. Yeah, they got $83 million approved in yeah. March. Ebbing Air National Guard Base will become the premier pilot training center. Yeah, Singapore. New location of the 425th Fighter Squadron, a Republic of Singapore Air Force F-16 Fighting Falcons. Wayne says, the Fairchild, A-10, everywhere. Every day is a happy day. That's a is <laughs> Planting some freedom seeds right there. Gus says we had about 10 or so Italian planes come into Pew's Air Force Base today. Oh, did you? Peas, peas, pews, 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 peas, pews. Pews. Is that peas? Pew. Pew, pew. Pews. Mm hmm. Well, there's peas. Peas. Must be peas. Church pews near Columbia's Air Force Base. <laughs> no, no, wrong pews. Yes, man who farts in church. Sit in own pew. Yeah. I was thought, well, maybe I'd like to fly when I retire. I don't know. I'll just get a good boat. <laughs> uh, I can do whatever I want. The missus says I can do whatever I want. Spell check sucks. <laughs> yeah, you meant peas. That's fine. Peas. Yeah, peas Air Force Base. Yep. Okay. Pews. Pews. It's fine. It got us in the neck of the woods. Yep. Yeah, I always thought, I love helicopters. Man, love me a helicopter. But <laughs> don't love to crash. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of upkeep with aircraft, be it they fix wings One or otherwise. brother-in-law's was a helicopter pilot for the Houston Police Department. Mm. So what, do you fly a Bell Ranger or something? I have no idea. Just cruise around uh, in the city looking, yeah. I guess, hunting down criminals and whatnot. Yeah. Flat-footing, chasing flat-footers. Shining those spotlights. Yeah. Yeah, I love me a helicopter. <clears throat> but, you know, dream. Was that probably a boat? <laughs> we got enough lakes around. Get a boat. Get a boat. You get less less distance to fall in a boat. <laughs> so, you I've know. always wondered mm. jump out of a plane. Oh, fuck that. No. Oh, I do. no, no, I still do. I no, you can do it. No, I you can do it. Do. Yeah, you can do it. Go ahead, go ahead, Donna. I've had no desire to jump out of them. Now, I've repelled out of helicopters. That was air assault, not badged. That was an air assault platoon. So we did all the same shit, but we weren't we weren't badged. Love air assault. So we sling load in, and then we. Could repel out. It was fun. Good stuff. But no, I've had no desire to jump out of an aircraft. No, I'll I'll slide down a rope. <laughs> I'm not going to jump out. No, no. Go ahead, Donna, though. You could do it. I'll bet you yeah. they... I got you... Someday, maybe. I'll bet you within, within a 100-mile radius, there's a, a jump school for you. I bet you there is. Because if there's a good size airport, which there is, I'll bet you. I'll bet you they've got a, a jump school somewhere around here. Go tandem. <laughs> Why? Well, that's usually yeah, how they start you out. To the first few times. Yeah, that's that's usually how the civilians start out is they go tandem. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, I, if I'm going to hit the ground, I don't want somebody else hitting the ground a split second after me and squish me. <laughs> yeah, flatten me. Yeah. yeah I, ain't that big. Uh, I get a small guy and I'll break his fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to break anybody's fall. No. It's like me and me and Gus jumping out of an airplane tandem. <laughs> Gus, I'm, I got a monkey on my back. Gus, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> You're going to hit first. Yeah, I guess I will. Fred says MS. MS. Fred. Turnip seed. Turnip seed. Fred Turnip Seed. Yeah, there's a good, there's seeds. a good country yeah. name, Turnip Seed. Yeah, I worked with a turnip seed here. MS. Is that where you're from or what you have? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, he just showed up in your, and you're, and you're busting his, okay, busting his chops now. Mississippi. Right, Mississippi. M I S S I S S I P P I. Mississippi. Mr. Fred Turnipseed. Turnipseed. You've been, you've been to the show before? The name sounds familiar. Fred Turnipseed. His cousin is uh, is Frank Taterskins. <laughs> Fred Taterskins. Oh my God! I cracked myself up. <laughs> so how are you doing tonight, Fred? Welcome to the show. We're talking about pushing Donna out of a plane. <laughs> well, we are sorta. Sort of. A little out of context, but yeah, we are. Yeah, I never had a... I've had dreams. I've had dreams where I've jumped out of planes. But I've never had the dream of jumping out of a plane. And I said, yeah, I'll rappel out of a helicopter, but... No, I'm not going to jump out of a plane. No. Judy's over there laughing. She's laughing. Fred says, actually, Orion Turner, Air Force. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why the name is familiar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fred Turner Seed. Yeah, Orion Turner and, uh, God, there's another name. You got another name. Um, Stumpy. Stumpy Jones. Right, Stumpy? Laurel says, why would anyone jump out of a perfectly good plane? Well, if they need to get in someplace without stopping, I guess they can do that. I mean, I understand the concept. It's Look, you know, it, in warfare, it's a good way to get a bunch of people into an area. Well, it's a quick way. <laughs> a good way. It's a quick way to get a bunch of people into an area. A lot of them fast. But uh, as a civilian, I thought, no, I don't think so. No. I mean, hey, you want to do that, that's fine. Yeah, he says stump. Yep. Okay, I'm, trying to... I'm not good with names. I'm good with faces. Laurel says, not an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> well, I, I sort of am, but I just, I like to drive. I like to drive fast. Um. But yeah, jumping out of a plane? No. Uh, helicopters love helicopters. Oh my goodness. Flew Cessna as a teenager. It's part of Civil Air Patrol. Not solo, of course. <laughs> Just when it's up in the air. Uh like small planes, love helicopters. I got to say, gives me the willies, <laughs> gets the the butterflies going. But I love it. I love it. I don't like I don't like uh, roller coasters. A lot of adrenaline junkies like roller coasters. I did. I oh do God, not like. Yeah, I, love roller I don't. Coasters. I don't like roller coasters. See, Donna likes roller coasters. I do not like roller coasters. They do nothing for have, me. <laughs> have a bitch of a time trying to get people to ride certain carny rides yeah well yeah good luck with that yeah that's that's not not my thing not my thing 
I think it's I think it's because I'm not in control. See, Gus wanted to skydive too. Yeah, and he yeah, wants like scuba, scuba diving. Now I'd like to scuba dive, but you know the way, yeah, where they have the whole face helmet thingies. Not the shit in your mouth. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. They've got the helmets that just it covers your whole face, instead of just has a thing in your mouth. I'd like to do it like that. No goggles. You don't just, like getting your face wet. Right. I don't like getting my face wet. And and they can actually talk when they have those those face the full face ones on them. You you you've all seen those, right? Right. Now those I'd like to do, but. Not a shit in my mouth, and yeah, <laughs> John's talking about shit in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I like no. having all those amoebas flying up my nose. No, no. no. <laughs> Laurel says she's not a fan of roller coasters. Scuba diving is fun. I'd imagine it is. I, I've never had the desire to snorkel. No, I you're just asking for problems snorkeling, because you just have to be off a couple inches, and yeah, <laughs> you're, right. you're free. you got to be Aquaman. Oh, but you blow it out. No, I'm sorry. I got water coming down my tube. No. So, yeah, I'd like to do scuba. But, again, with the full face mask ones, not the goggles and the damn mouth respirator thing. No. Not full full face mask. I'll do that. That's fine. My face isn't wet. And, <laughs> and I don't have shit in my mouth. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, no. I used to watch the kids go on roller coasters. We bring them down to the, the parks every once in a while. A couple times, a couple times when they were young, get on the roller coaster and go. Yeah, you have at it. <laughs> it's, I'm not doing it. It's not that I'm afraid to do it. It just does nothing for me. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I used to love those. They were like cages, and you get two or three people in them. Oh, the cages. You hit it just right. If you hit that brake just right at mm. the right time. You could make it flip backwards. I had my cousin puke all over me one well, time for doing that. Yeah, well, there you go. But, yeah, I don't mind. You're talking about, like, they've got the cages, and they got, like, three of them, and then they, they turn, yeah. and they spin, and then the whole thing, yeah. and you've got a... Yeah, yeah. see, now, cool. no, those are fine. I don't have a problem with that. Well, I like them when you, you hit that brake. I just, just don't like roller right coasters. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, Laurel says regulator. Yeah, regulators, there ride. Regulator. regulator. That's just shit in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. You call it a regulator, I say shit in your mouth, potato, potato. <laughs> I got the scuba manual right here. It says shit in your shit mouth. In your mouth. <laughs> Put the shit in your mouth. <laughs> a regulator. No, no, I don't know. Gus says he loves roller coaster. Well, there you go. You can go ride them roller coasters, Mr. Gus, Mr. Augustus McCray. Laurel says exactly why I don't ride those rides. I hate puking. Yeah, see, the ones, the ones that spin and stuff, that doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I just, I just don't like roller coasters. Now, there's some roads, and we've talked about that. There's some roads in New Hampshire that are fun as hell to drive. And it's like you're in a roller coaster. And the missus, she she puts up with me. But, uh, yeah, there's there's a, there's a couple corners out there. And I can tell you when they're coming up, she just does not like it. She does not like it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's fine. But, see, I'm in control. I'm in control. I wouldn't want to be riding with me. Which is, again, why I don't like Man, I don't roller trust coasters. The other people on the road. Yeah. Well. I drives good. <laughs> there, there ain't a vehicle that I haven't that I haven't been behind the wheel that I that I haven't been able to drive. I'm a good driver. Yep. Then took defensive and offensive driving courses. I like those slow machines. Slow scrapers. Slow machines. Behind cats. <laughs> She's here. She goes, Donna. She wants to jump out of planes, but but she she likes slow cars and shit. Yeah, really. That ain't that fucking weird. Laurel says merry-go-rounds and Ferris wheels 
are god awful too. God awful. Oh, I love a Ferris wheel. Those are fun. Oh yeah. I like a Ferris wheel. Now, I wouldn't want it to go 500 miles an hour. I like a Ferris wheel. Big and slow. Up there with your gal. You're just kind of rocking back and forth a little bit. Waiting for the other people to come up. You just slowly go on up. And stop and go and stop. And then just, just go. Yeah. But that's okay, Laurel. You don't have to go on a Ferris wheel either. I don't like haunted houses either. And and it's not because it scares me. It's because it pisses me off I can't shoot somebody. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna jump out at me, you're gonna get stabbed or shot. That's that's all it is. It's not it's not that I'm afraid of it. It's that I, I know because I know exactly what the fuck I'm getting into. I just don't like not being able to stab or shoot somebody. <laughs> well, we used to <coughs> park. Mm. Every year we did a haunted park thing. <laughs> oh, God, that was fun. We had this guy that he had uh, put this big horned, hairy, buffalo-type headgear on and chased people around with a chainsaw. Mm. <laughs> that was fun. You know, fun for him. <laughs> yeah. Gus yeah, says, uh, tilt-a-whirl. Yep. Ever been on a double Ferris wheel? No, I haven't. I haven't been on a double Ferris wheel. Laurel says exactly. I don't know what she's saying exactly for. But yeah, I don't... The haunted house, that's good for the kids. I've gone through them with the kids, but I just, I don't like the... If somebody's going to jump out at me, if I can't punch them, stab them, or shoot them, I don't want to be involved, because then it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have every John goes into the haunted house and all the all the people in the haunted house go I'm talking about the people running it go running out the other end. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm a, I also like watching the kids. If we go to parks, I just like watching the kids. I'll sit on a bench, just watch the kids go through go have their fun. I have no desire to really do much anything except for bring them. Bring them and watch them have fun. Same way as going to the lake. You want to you want to jump in the lake? Go ahead. I'll watch you have fun at the lake. Unless I'm canoeing or something. Laurel says stabbing. Yeah, stabby stab. Gonna jump out? <laughs> yeah, fuck around, find out. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about this. Oh, scary, wasn't it? Yeah, how do you like that? Pretty damn scary. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> boogity boogity oh my goodness oh no is uh Stumpy gonna come back with another name Stumpy gonna change it. he's running he's running from the CIA NSA ABC CID M-O-U-S-E M-O-U-S-E <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so you know, as long as the kids are having fun, that's all I care about. It's the same way if you go someplace and they've got uh, they got the food stuff. Yeah, I'll eat something every once in a while, but usually not. Let the kids have it because nothing's worse than having something and not being home. <laughs> you, know, you have something and, and about 20 minutes later it decides that, yeah, <laughs> we're not liking this. And I'm I'm not a big public facilities sort of person. I'm not either. I, and yeah. Yeah, I can spend like all day long in a boat. Never have to go. Yeah. Boy, the minute I hit ground, though. Yeah, when I go out, I I just bring I bring mild stuff with me that I know is not gonna not gonna do anything. It's the same way when we're out driving. It's like you don't stop and eat someplace on your way on the loop. You know, if, if we're just out drive, do it on the way back because nothing sucks worse than because if they use the wrong grease or there's something, there's something, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll eat. And then 20 minutes later, it's like, yeah, we need to, we need to get rid of this. And no, not a big public facility sort of guy. Gus says Clark's trading bears can ride the train and crazy guy chases you shooting at you in a car only place on earth 
but it's here in New Hampshire. Yeah, that's uh, Clark's Trading Post. That's up in the, up in the mountains. It's up in the, the mountains. That by is that just outside of Franconia? Is that where it is? Clark's Trading Post. We were uh, dr- taking a drive the other day. And you know how when you, if you go on loose, but you're coming, you're coming the opposite direction. So everything looks different when you're just, you're not used to coming from that direction. So we're going along and we're, we're out on a back road. Well, back road, it's not really a back road, but we're out on a back road. Past this place and it's like, man, man, that bacon, this, this place would make a really good, really good ranch. You know, need some f- fence needs to be fixed and stuff like that. But it's, oh, man, it's got a little pond. And it's a, look at that. That's really nice. It was Charming Fair Farm. <laughs> so we pass, they usually pass it the other way. <laughs> we pass it the opposite direction. So instead of coming up to the front, we came up from the back. So I didn't recognize it. <laughs> look, yeah, it's Charming Fair Farm. That's expensive for not, not seeing a lot, but yeah. Uh, you should look that one up and show people. Let's see here, Clark's. Clark's Trading Post, New Hampshire. Here we go. I'm going to pull this up. Clark's Bears. Here are the photos. Oh, look at these bears. There's bears, and he's in a cart. He's in a cart. Bears in a cart. What do we got here? Oh, what the hell? And there's a... It looks like they're in a trolley car t- sort of thing there. Bunch of Asians. Asian folks. With cameras. Yeah, they look, uh, I don't know, they're either Japanese or Filipino. They don't look Korean. They don't look Chinese. Oh, there's a big statue of a bear. Oh, there's a bear walking around. It's a bear walking around. Yeah, oh, I love these things. The uh, the bumper cars. The uh, bumper car. Yeah, bumper. They're bumper cars, but they're in the water. Water bumper cars. Oh yeah. Yeah, cool. those are cool. I like those. Holy cow! That must be a water slide. It's got a. It's a serpent. My goodness, it's got a big old serpent, serpent water slide, and you come out of its mouth. No, there's bear statues. You can get your picture taken with bear statues. Oh, there's another movie. All right, here we are. Looking around. Oh, that was a short movie. Okay, and there's a... Oh, this must be where the bears are going to be entertaining people, doing tricks. And tricks inside there. Clark's Trading Post, Bear Show, and Train Rides. Oh, there's a bear standing up. Looks like he's going to put a basketball in a, in a hoop or something. Yeah, rock climbing. Rock climbing. There's a steam engine, probably a fire engine. Probably a steam fire engine. Oh, there's a train ride. Is there Gus? Is Gus on there? Judy says, pretty cool. Is Gus on that train ride? I don't know. I don't see him. There's more. More of those. Uh, he looks Hispanic. He doesn't look Asian. Uh, hey, smile for the camera. Having a good time. Okay. Oh, motorbicles. A bunch of motorbikes. Clark's Trading Post. There's another one. Oh, there's another car. That almost looks like a Duesenberg. Another little roadster, roadster car. There's another car. There, you see, there's my car right there. I could, I could drive that thing around the back roads in New Hampshire. Have a good time. Tooting a little long. Oh, Segway. Goes on a segue. They were supposed to change the world. <laughs> they oh boy, that they, was so much fun. Yeah, they didn't change Riding anything. Segways went through a. Uh, they have a 
couple of times a year here. They have a police academy, a citizens police academy here. Mm-hmm. And we got to do the Segway thing. Boy, that was fun. Where is he here? Pricing and hours. Let's look at here. 2024 ticket prices. Full day general admission, four to sixty four is twenty nine dollars a person. Well, that's not bad. Well, that's not bad if unless you got a family of five. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it's just I mean that's that's sixty bucks for, for you and a you and a guest. That's not too bad. Seniors is twenty six. That's sixty five and above. Military with a valid ID is twenty six. And toddlers one to three is free. That's that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Well, yeah, that's the advance. So if you buy them in advance, you must purchase midnight the day prior. Day of ticket, so if you just showed up, you're looking at thirty three dollars a person. Thirty dollars for seniors, sixty five and above. Thirty dollars a person with a military ID and toddlers are free again, one through six. You can get a season pass. Now, I guess if you lived up there, that'd probably be even better. Yeah, that'd uh, be that's, like, it's ninety nine bucks for a season. Branson. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. If, especially if you live in the area and you want a Branson pass, yeah, definitely. Not. Not. Gus says, "What the heck? They usually show the guy." Well, I haven't. Well, that was just that was just a. I'm I'm looking at their site now. Let's see if they've got. Uh, they got food. Oh, look at that! They got the uh, peppermint saloon, popcorn wagon, Pullman's pizza and subs, whistle stop. See, that's where they get you too. Is I'll bet you. Let's let's just go. Let's see how much the the Pullman's pizza. Oh, look at them pizza. I wonder how much it is. They show how much it is. They don't tell you how much it is. That's where they get you. They get you. Okay, let's see here. Attractions. They've got uh, Wolfman Lore, Tuttle Shooting Gallery, Train Ride, Segway Safari, Segway Park, Merlin's Mansion, Climbing Tower, The Circus, The Blaster Boats. Yeah, there must have been those things. And then the bear show and Anaconda Escape. That's the uh, the water slide. He's even made the national news, says Gus. The guy shooting shooting things. I'm trying to see. Let's see if we got. Let's see if we got some. Usually have a media. I don't see any media media on here. Traction, no tickets, no. Come on, you got to have media. Let's try this. Um, Shooting fun. Clark's trading post. Let's see what we got here. There's the wolf man. Clark's wolf man. That's his name, the wolf man. Okay, let's see here. This should be the wolf man right there. Hello, pigeon lickers. You know something? I don't like odags, you flat mutt landed marbopping <laughs> yellow belly long nosed geezers. What are you doing on my turf? You know what I do with you? I'll take you, and I'll take your heads, and I'll stick you right down those jaws down there. My car runs off a flatlanders. And if you ever come with me and double-cross me, you'll become varmint stew, especially kids. Boiled kids with skunk cabbage and rat tails. That's my favorite. <laughs> when you enter my zone, you have been to the danger zone. And if you ever take a train ride, and you ever come back alive, your lives will never be the same again. You will live in nightmares for the rest of your lives. I'm getting hungry. I know I'm in this place right now. I'm going to get one right now. I don't know. I'm going to get one right now. Okay. Come on, I'm like, my car runs off a flat head, and you 
Did you run this for me? <laughs> well, that's an earlier one. Well, well, there you go. When you get your next big idea, Gus got his uh, Gus got his wolf man. <laughs> yeah, now only something different. And they got Santa's village up in that neck of the woods too. So you got Clark's trading post, and you've got. Sanders Village, you couldn't get too too different of a type of park. What a cool job. Maybe I should apply. I think I should apply and be the new wolf man up there at Clark's Trading Post. I don't know. I'd have to knock out a few teeth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Some meth head. Mm. Yeah, well. I guess I can blacken some teeth in and be fine. Looks like he's having some fun. Yeah, you can you can drop a fair fair bit of change up in those places. They get you coming in the door and then they get yeah, of course you eating. Yeah, eating. anytime you eat anything. And then you got the gift shops and cause you gotta have some gift shop stuff. You gotta leave with something. So yeah, things ain't cheap anymore. We're talking about the uh, man. My nose itches. We're talking about the uh, Cog Railway up the Mount Washington. It's like, man, that'd be nice too. But that's a good chunk of change. I don't know. Maybe I'll take the misses up there this year. Anyways, we'll see. Still haven't made it out to the Isle of Shoals. Oh damn, it's on my bucket list. Been living, been living here for. Decades now, and then <laughs> still haven't made it out to the Isle of Shoals. Wow, it's uh, about seven seven miles off the main New Hampshire coast. It's a bunch of islands out there. Pretty neat stuff. Gus says Santa's Village is down the street from our camp. Yeah, yeah, it's right in your neck of the woods. Gus says you can see the Cog Railway. Going up Mount Washington from his camp. We'll see. We'll see. We didn't get out there this last year. Shitty year. We'll, we'll make it up there this year. Yep. They have the village. Clark's Trading Post. What else they got up there? Clark, Santa's Village. Cog Railroad. They got the Mount Washington Hotel. The big old grand place. They're putting in a new roller coaster right now. Are they? Where? Santa's Village? Not that it matters to me. I'm not a roller coaster guy. <laughs> yeah, not my thing. Yeah, going to get hit 70 this week. 70 degrees. Wow. Man, yeah. We're up in the 80s now. Yeah. You didn't have a shit ton of snow dumped on you, though. No. no. Thank God. Yeah, this was actually, I can't complain too much, because we only had it for about 24 hours. The second day was, was nothing. 
It's like, I can't complain. I got it cleared. I cleared it all by hand. Gus didn't. Gus got on his machine. <laughs> yeah, he went to town with it. Gus says yes. Gus didn't want to didn't want to join us in the in the Zoom room because he wanted to see the show. When he's in the Zoom room, he doesn't see the show. And when I have to show stuff, he has to go. Okay, now I'm going to have to switch over here and I'm going to have to look. Mm, yep. Oh, we picked up a shit ton of <laughs> shit ton of meat. This uh, this weekend, sale after sale, pick up 50, 60 bucks here, 100 bucks there. <laughs> it all it all comes out in the end because you buy it on sale and you don't have to worry about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It's good. You got to have the money to put down first, but it <laughs> it works out. Yeah, you know, when you're paying buck 50 a pound for something that you're normally paying six seven bucks a pound it's like okay that's good so we got ourselves some brisket and a bunch of other goodies oh yeah because missus said you're gonna fire up the smoker this year didn't didn't smoke anything last year i don't think maybe once really? yeah i just didn't I had a well, it rained it remember day. last summer sucked it rained all summer mm, yeah the same thing. I got out, got out on the water, and then it rained. It's like, oh shit! So I, I could only, I only got out a handful of times because it rained the rest of the year. It's like, what the hell? This year, we're we're firing up the smoker, firing up the rig. Call it the rig, a black black rig. I should be able to get one more year out of it. Maybe have to replace it. Thought about replacing it last year, but with all the other bills, it's like, nah, not happening. So, two things on my list is a new smoker and uh, and a new pizza oven, but a full-size one. I've got a small one, and, and it works, but you really need you really need a good, sizable wood-fired oven. So, those are the two things that are on the list. The smoker, I can get a lot cheaper than the other one. The other one, I'm still looking between three and five grand, probably for a wow. decent pizza oven. Yeah. Smoker, you can get those for a few hundred bucks. That's fine. Yeah. I had one of those. Gave it to my brother. Smoker? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got, like I said, I got the rig. It's a, uh, it's got a burner. <clears throat> you know, you put your pots on. So you got a burner and then you have a, a gas grill and then you have a charcoal grill slash smoker and then a smoke box off the end of that so i call it the rig it's good. it does everything but i've had that for quite a long time might get another year out of it might we almost got a new smoker last year it's like no i can't i can't all the other crap that we had to put into our budget and and again last year was the chicken year and she'd been wanting chickens for long time but we couldn't justify it because it ain't cheap starting out unless you've if you've got all the scraps to build your run in your coop and stuff then you can do it fairly cheap if you don't and you're starting from scratch you're it's expensive it's expensive so that was in our actual that was our budget so we we got that for the for the missus and got her chickens and enjoying the hell out of our eggs and the chickens are they're funny and this we get more people talking to us since we've had the chicken than than uh, than all the years before. Then Gus says your your next payment for Facebook will take care of it all. Yeah, man, I'm rolling in it. Well, I am. I am rolling in it. <clears throat> I don't think I've gone over two bucks a month. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's like when somebody can get gut their heckles up with me. It's oh you're you're <laughs> you're using Facebook to make money. It's like yeah the, the potential yeah, right. the potential's there I guess, uh, but uh, no no they don't pay me enough to to deal with the likes of you. <laughs> so goodbye goodbye. Cut another Yahoo out the other day. 
<laughs> send send Gus a message. Gus, you got to check out that message. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow, wow. They have a, yeah, life would be dull if you didn't get some of those. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're fine. I, I don't waste. I don't waste my time bickering with them or anything. I just you're gone. I thought about responding to him. It's like, no, <laughs> you're just, you're just gone. He's been following my content for a while. <laughs> it's like, no, hey, you know, you don't have to agree with everything, but when you're that anti-Semitic, it's like, whoa, holy crap. For those who didn't see the post, go to my, I had made a, a blurb post about, about Israel. It was, I think it was yesterday and how, you know, you can't, you can't, on one hand, say you believe that they can, they deserve the right to protect themselves. And then everything they do, you say is wrong. It's like, stop it. It's like, then you don't really believe that they deserve to protect themselves. And this guy just went, he went off. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. The Jews are responsible for this and that and this and that and this and that. It's like, wow. The only thing missing was a 1930s big crook nose Nazi propaganda anti-Jew poster posted with it. That's the only thing that was missing from his post. It's like, wow. Wow. So I I gave him the boot. <laughs> didn't even didn't even respond. Gave him the boot. Made a note post for everybody to see and and posted up what he had posted. It's like, there you go. <clears throat> wow. Again, we don't have to we don't have to agree on everything. We we don't. But there's some lines. <laughs> there's a, hey, there's some things you might want to keep to yourself. When you're posting them on my page, we can agree on 99% of the shit out there. You post the 1% that's definitely way out there, you're gone. You're gone. Yeah. Holy cow. So folks can go to my page and they can look up for that post. And it's like there's a, no way, no way, and it's no gone. Again, it's <laughs> yeah, you might say this or that. This was a laundry list. <laughs> this was a laundry list. Like holy cow, no, no. I, I call those people Hamas supporters. Oh, it was it was it was uh, it was horrible, you know, that the world world would be a better place and they wouldn't be missed if they were just gone. It's like holy crap! <laughs> I was saying, okay, where's the from the bo from the river to the sea? You're gonna post that up there too, because you damn near said everything else. It was like wow, I did not believe that that came from somebody that actually followed my content and is has posted on my posts before. It's like I'd figured. That, no matter what your proclivities for this and that is, I figured the people would have enough common sense that even if that's what you think, you don't you don't post that shit out on my page. You just don't. No. And uh, he did. He did. It was uh, it was something. <laughs> it was definitely something. Oh my goodness. So yeah, go to my page and find that. It's, it's a, yeah, because I ain't gonna read it out here. <laughs> no, it's bad. It's bad. So again, and it's not about. Look, I I don't agree with everything that Israel has done and has ever done. But there's a big difference between that and being this guy. Gus says, I'm surprised you didn't get in trouble for what he said. Excuse me. Yeah, no, no kidding. Yeah, really? Well, no, see on Facebook, I'm sure that's perfectly fine. I'm sure that's perfectly fine. They're targeting the, the, the people that it's okay to, to target. I don't think that. No, I got in trouble for posting an anti-Nazi thing. <laughs> You're glorifying. It's like I was, I was making fun of them. <laughs> what are you talking about? So yeah, I didn't do just anti-Jew stuff. I didn't think that's fine. It's like anti-white stuff. You can post anything anti-white you want. Be up there all day. Then some. Nobody cares. Report it all you want. It's still going to be there. Crazy. But yeah, he that was some wow. Definitely violation of my page. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah. 
That was that was crazy. Craziness. But yeah, I, I constantly show people to the door. A lot of spam. Holy shit. Folks know probably noticed and I made a post about it the other day that as soon as I post anything whiskey, I just instantly make it to folks who follow my content. Because the spam bots and, and everything else start flooding in and I have to clean that up and it's no. Don't need that. Oh, join our join our private bourbon group. <laughs> Kiss my ass. <laughs> you didn't ask me. If you got a whiskey group out there and you want and you want to advertise and you come to me, you don't spam my post and you don't hit up all my members. Stop it. Hey, I got a bottle of this. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't have a bottle of this. Contact me. No. Contact the block button. <laughs> I don't put up with that. I don't, again, I, I, vast majority of them, they're spam bots. But I don't do that. I don't go to other people's pages and pull that crap. Peggy says, I don't share a post about prices in 2020 versus now. Got my slam. <laughs> you got your hand slapped for that? Judy says, yeah, those are irritating. They are. They're just. So if. If you post on one of my posts and you get notified, hey, somebody posted and you try to go there and it says doesn't exist, yeah, I was quicker on the draw. <laughs> I clean up. I am. I got my phone with me. I check my phone all the time. I or I'm, or I'm with my laptop or I'm in the studio. I check all the time. Who slapped you? Did Facebook slap you? To get covered or they just they penalize you i'm still penalized my account i can't do i can't make events and stuff but every time i post up my whiskey stuff or whatever they hey you can make this an event it's like hey no i can't because <laughs> you've restricted my account stop it facebook bipolarism judy says i'm quick and i appreciate it i keep my page clean i keep my page clean I keep mine locked down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I allow a lot of stuff. That's what it gets me to is people go, when when they get their hand slapped because they won't shut the fuck up when I tell them to shut up. Look, I generally give you two or three go-arounds. We don't have to agree. But when you then just don't shut up, look, it's my page. I'm not going to keep going back and forth. And if you haven't convinced me it, by three go-arounds, you're not going to do it. Chances are you're not going to convince me anyways. Because I'm pretty well secure in what I'm posting but if you can't convince me three times around then just let it go and I'll leave it up for the world to see and people can make their own opinions on it I don't I don't go and I don't remove people's shit unless they're blocked and when they're blocked their stuff disappears I still see it it's there it's it's in I see it. it's kind of in a shadow, but nobody else can see it. Well, why? Because they're blocked from my page and they brought that on themselves. So people go, you don't like, you don't like people disagreeing with you. I don't care if you disagree oh, with me. Bullshit. It's your page. Right. Right. But it, right. It's my page, but I don't care if you disagree with me. What I care is, look, you've disagreed with me. I don't agree with you. I post why you could respond back. More, normally, people just say the same thing and they rephrase it. It's like you're not, you're not making anything. Look, and I'm not going to go back and forth perpetually over the same stuff. Three go around, have a nice day. If you won't shut the fuck up, don't don't get all don't get all hurt and act a victim when you get shown the door. My page, your page, your rules. You do whatever you want. So again, it's not that, oh, John doesn't like people. John doesn't like people disagreeing with him, and John doesn't let people disagree with him on his page. Wrong and wrong. I don't care if you disagree with me. Most of the time, people don't, they, they don't agree with me, and then I, then I expand on what I said, and they realize I'm usually coming from a little bit different angle than they are. There was something that they didn't think about, and that's fine. So that's the way it works. 
but there are things where people just we just don't we don't agree. You can you can be equally educated, equally well intended, and come to two different conclusions. That's just yeah. how life works. So you go, okay, fine, that's it. You're not convincing me. I'm not convincing you. Let's move on. And if you don't, because you got to get the last word in, you got to convince me in the world. Wrong page. Again, I get people that disagree with me. That's fine. You're wrong, but that's, but that's fine. And if I get something wrong, people know me. Out of all the pages, if, if I get something wrong, I'll correct it. I get no, there's no pride lost. Hey, if I'm missing a, a piece of crucial information, I'll correct it and I'll put it in there. And I'll make a note. And I'll usually make another note underneath it and go, hey, <laughs> I made a correction. Go read it. I've got, there's no pride lost. I deleted an entire freaking article that I had posted up the other day. And what I do immediately after, I made a post and said, hey, the other day I made a, I made a, a post about this. I was two days late in the information that I had. The state had corrected their fuck up two days before I posted it, but I didn't. I didn't know that. So by that time, if you then read, if you then read what I wrote, it had been out of date, and it doesn't matter because it's already been corrected. So I I removed the post and I posted up. Hey, those who read the article, this is what this is. It's it's. I explain just like I told you right now. So there's no there's no pride there's no pride lost. No pride lost. I'm, I'm trying to hide something. I'm not trying to censor people. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm a lot nicer than I need to be. And I certainly ain't getting paid to be nice. <laughs> if you want to pay me to be nice, that's fine. That's fine. Then we can we can discuss it. But yeah, I'm fairly civil. I usually come in blazing. I like that fairly, sis. <laughs> What's that? I like that fairly civil. <laughs> Fair, yeah, fairly civil. Yeah, no, I am. I am. I'm. I'm fairly civil and, until I'm not. <laughs> until until I'm not. And then when I'm not, I'm really fucking uncivil. <laughs> so, so so I was like, oh Jesus, yes, John. John, John will let you have it. But if he does, you probably had it coming to probably you. Probably deserved it. Right. Because I'm, 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 a, I'm a very civil guy. I try to be as nice as I can to folks. I've got, I've got no patience for, for stupidity, you know, foolishness. i got no patience for it. But I, I allow for a little bit of it because I understand the way the world is and the way people are. And that's fine. But if John's jumping on your ass, then yeah, you probably had it coming. So again, that's like, oh, you do this, you just don't like it. Ah, shut the fuck up. You had, you had, I like three go arounds. I gave you seventy go arounds, and you still won't shut up. You know, so stop it. No, no, that's fine. I don't run a damn debate club. <laughs> it's like, here's the information. There you go. If you don't agree with it, fine. If you agree with it, fine. Post up about. It. Here's another thing that just this chaps my ass, and I've had I've had people like this before. I've even had people that were so-called friends of mine do this shit. They follow your shit. They follow your shit. They follow your shit, and the only time they post up is when they disagree with you. Yeah. Don't follow my shit then. If you're not liking my content, if you're not adding to the conversation, the only time that you're going to post and when you disagree with me, I'd just rather not not be involved in that shenanigans. Because <laughs> that's not right. It's just, don't do that. And it's, and it's an easy thing to do. Just like a post. <laughs> Say, just a couple good, but don't... The only time I hear from you is when you disagree with me. Other than that, you just you're nothing there. You're just quiet. Stop it. No. What are you just sitting back to snipe me? <laughs> yeah, that's what it seems like. Yeah. Stop it. Don't snipe me. It's it's aggravating enough when I write out a big old article and give a bunch of information. Somebody wants to snipe me on a sentence. 
It's like, get out of here. <laughs> really, that's what's, that's what's important to you. Stop it. But yeah, you're just hanging around to see something that you can disagree with. Look, you know, what a miserable way to live your life. Just waiting. Just, oh, yeah. So I disagree with that. So boom. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to, now I'm going to step in and I'm going to say something. No. No. I don't want to just hear from you when you disagree with me. I want to hear from when you agree with me too. It's just called manners. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the internet. Yeah, it's a wonderful place. Mm. It's a wonderful tool, but it's called scroll, scroll. What's called scroll? Scroll, scroll on by. What if you don't agree? Yeah, pick your battles. But again, if the only time that you're interacting with me is when you disagree with me, that's what that's a shitty way. It's a shitty interaction schedule. <laughs> no, give me a thumbs up. Interact when you agree with shit. And I don't post on everything. Hey, look, you know, I follow a wide range of content, and generally, I don't post on shit. If I agree, I might post that I agree or I'll give him a thumbs up or something like that. But if I disagree, I just scroll on by, which is probably what Gus is talking about. I just scroll on by. It's not worth it unless it's worth it. <laughs> and it's it's never worth it. It, it, it oh, For me, it's not. Why? Because I got my own page. I got my own page. It's not a personal page. I got a personal page, too. I hardly ever use it. <laughs> but I got the Whiskey Cowboy. It's what I do. Do, do, do. But, yeah, made it, made it. Or we're, we're past the hour. Past the hour. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 10, 12? That's yeah. what the clock says. Oh, that's what, that's what the computer says, too. 10, 12. 10, 4. And four. And four. All right, all right, all right. It was a good show. Next show will be Wednesday evening, right? Got to correct me. Sometimes I get it wrong. Today is Sunday, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Monday. It's, it, it's trash day. Oh, I never even said I was going to have the, the country fried chicken for dinner, but my youngest... Uh, Shot a message and she's she's sick. So if she's still sick, we don't want her here. Not that we don't care about her, but yeah, we just. The only time we get sick is when somebody brings it to the house. Gus says 99% of the time it's not worth it. Yeah, worth it. Yeah. Judy says you'll be wait, uh, late Wednesday. That's okay. And here's another thing. if If you folks are going to make it to the show. But you might be late. Go and shoot me off a message. I mean, you don't have to, but it'll help. Like, like let's say Easter, Easter Sunday. If folks had said we're going to be just a little bit late, it'd have been fine. I wouldn't have shut the show down. <laughs> but if people aren't people aren't showing up. It's like, oh, I just do it another night. Well, daylight. Easter Sunday, yeah, you figure. Right, I fi right, I figured out if, somewhere else. Right, if they didn't make it by twenty after, they're probably not going to make it, and I understand. So I shut the show down, and then and then everybody is like, boom, 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 boom. There we go. Oh shit, <laughs> they just missed the show. Well, if I had known that they were going to make the show, but they were going to be late, I'd have, I'd have just yacked a little bit longer with Gus on the show. And then waited for people to come in. But yeah, Gus has even done that too. He's like, hey, I'm not going to be on the show. It's like, okay. Well, that's good because then I know whether he's going to be uh, hiding in the bushes or not. And if he's not <laughs> hiding in the bushes, we can talk shit about him. So yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like, no. Anybody, no. For anybody that's, that's uh, tuning in now might hear this. If I'm going to talk shit, I don't care whether you're in the bushes whether you're not here, whether you're here, it's, I don't, I don't talk any different. Uh, it is what it is, but, uh, yeah, the, nobody's safe. Nobody's safe on the show. <laughs> so your safe space. Uh, you want a safe space? Don't be tuning in. <laughs> oh, every,
everybody's a yeah, target. I'm even I a target. I target myself half the time. So I'm going <laughs> to sign off to go to bed early. Yeah. But uh, more hoeing to do tomorrow. She's she's out. You heard that. Donna's going to be out tomorrow. hoeing tomorrow. Donna's going to be out tomorrow. hoeing. <laughs> Gus says we have a good talk. We always do. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, yeah, we're going to close on down. Thank you all for showing up. Uh, Judy, Thanks. Gus, uh, Laurel, Peggy. The hell am I? Who am I missing? Stump. Uh, Judy, Laurel, Peggy, Donna, Stump, something, whatever. We've got more. <laughs> we got more numbers than that, so I don't know who's there. Peggy That's says, I have a busy week coming up and try to tune in Wednesday. I'm calling it a day now. Good night and thank you, John. You're welcome, Peggy. Thank you for showing up. Yeah, yeah we're, we're closing down. Always anyways. good. We're always, we're always having a good show. It is a good show. Uh, I will be online on Facebook tomorrow. So y'all know how to get in touch with me. Y'all have a good night. God bless and take care.